go into his viewing. I got there early because I didn't want to see it. I didn't want everybody to see me break because I knew there was one of two things that was going to happen. It's either I was going to jump on top of the casket and punch the punch the, the, the body bloody, you know, just destroy it because I was so mad or I was going to break. Well, I broke. This is going to hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. 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 I think that this he planned this yeah. for a long time. I think he just didn't have the courage because he was Dr. Death. And we joke about we, it. We did. We joke we about joke it. We joke about yeah. it. We actually I said it. Grim Reaper. We we used yeah. to said it. He's going to know. If, so, he's going to call us to tell us he call, died. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's. It sounds like people might think that's like you know Mor- that's, uh, morbid, that's but, but sense of he would. Mind. That was his sense. That was. If I got a text from him, first thing I thought is, who the fuck died? Well, like he, he would text me about all kinds I, of I during football season. He was every day. Okay, because the kids were playing and it was football and that's, you know, whatever. It was everything. And he knew that I, high school football is my thing, right? So it was just like I would know shit. He would ask me, hey, Seton Hall's playing this team. What do you think about this? And I would know what was going on. We'd have, then like the rest of the season, it was like once a week, maybe twice, or he'd stop over the house because he's a fixture, right? For mm-hmm. years and years and years, well over 15 years of doing this every single week. And I just, I, I, I got to the point where I was like, when he would text me, I'd be like, first, okay, who died? And a lot of times, somebody it was, somebody died, I'd be like, Mike, what the fuck? You gotta, do you like look in the obituary so you can fucking beat the person? On Monday, on Monday, which is May 6th, he called me. Now, mind you, my father in law already passed, and I didn't call him. I'm not Dr. Death, so I don't call everybody to say somebody died. He didn't know my father in law. He called me to tell it. There's, there's a guy who listens to the show. He's in Pittsburgh. His name's Bernie O'Brien. He's like, yeah, Bernie's father died. I'm like, mother. And I already know where it was going. Mike, Mike wanted me to do a post for it. I'm like, Mike, listen, I can't really right now. My father-in-law just passed. I, I'm, I'm kind of dealing with, with that and my wife right now. Um, but I was like, I'm, I'm hanging. I got the phone. I'm like, motherfucker, did it again? Tell me about somebody yeah. who died. He, he, he loved it. Actually, it became like a joke after a while. Like, not that death is a joke, but he would purposely do it like yeah. you know he called there, me to tell I, me somebody's farm animal died he i told him hey so and so died like i thought i beat him to it and he goes dude yeah that's old news i i he goes i he had something else for me like something he said to me made me crack up i just was like i can't like this guy <laughs> you know so he, he you, you know wait just before i getting back to that you know we were talking about how how his behavior was whatever but one of the biggest things that caught my eye on that Instagram live was right, right in the beginning. He said, there's going to be a lot of loss tonight. Uh, right. I, I didn't even, I didn't pick it up. Yeah. I actually looked at him and go, what the fuck are you talking about? You like, know? honestly, and it, and I, I don't make things about me. I'm not that type of a man. I don't like, I don't, you know, utilize like, I, I just not me, but it, it actually kept on replaying in my head, you know? And I'm like, Oh shit. And then, like, you know, now, the aftermath, you're like, damn. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to bring something to your attention right now. Uh, so after Mike passed, after he did what he did, that final night, right? We all know the, the, the thing about final night, and I want to get to our reactions in just a moment. I reached out to a friend of mine because I was grieving, and I wanted a little bit of peace. I wanted a way. I, I, I couldn't do enough to, to, to solidify his memory. So I, I called a friend of mine, uh, Danny Rivera. You know him as Bookham. He yeah, runs the Bridges Project. Real good guy. And he made this song. He, he, he worked on it, made this song. And I'm not a rap fan by any means, but I can recognize talent. And Danny's got talent. So I said, Danny, just listen, can you pen something? You got some talent. I just, I need something. He sends me this song, and I'll never forget it. I'm listening to it in my kitchen. And I can't breathe. My wife, who works from home, sees me and she's like what's the matter and i can't talk because i can't breathe and she actually gets mad at me she goes i thought you were having a heart attack i said so you're fucking yelling at me if i'm gonna have a heart attack she's fucking she's yelling at me because she's getting scared and um it's it's called the other side and i put together uh a little video and i want you guys to see it for the first time and it's going to be played now and we'll also play it at the end of this episode because i want everybody else to see it um it's it's pretty it's pretty solid. Hey Andrew, you got that? Can you play that for me? Uh, 
I miss you, but I'll be alright until the day I see you on the other side. I'll keep on looking to the sky until the day I see you on the other side. See you on the other side. I might give you a smile through my vigorous pain. You could be my enemy, I wouldn't wish you the same When a storm hits, my cheekbones trickle with rain Edge of my bed, looking at my kids' pictures again Death started looking real enticing again I got drive, but here I go, hitchhiking again My good friends always tell me, you gonna make it through Rock solid character, so they think I'm unbreakable Heart shattered in pieces, I'm battling demons Sky's the limit, but the ground's been collapsing beneath me A lot of brothers in blue, lately we haven't been speaking Maybe when I'm dead, they'll act like they happy to see me Academy taught me they'll have my back whenever I need them Roll call is packed, but I feel nobody can see me God sent me messages, then my depression deleted Lord, it's hard to be strong Strong when you feel so defeated, God. I miss you, but I'll be alright until the day I see you on the other side. I'll keep on looking to the sky until the day I see you on the other side. See you on the other my circle is super small but the love is immense forgive me just know my loyalty wasn't pretend brothers who share too much pain just to be friends every amazing story must eventually come to an end so here i am crossroads hoping for a miracle tunnel vision feel death lord i'm not hearing you amazing grace door cracks open a light peering through this broken soul right away started feeling new i made it far in this vessel this broken and scarred open book always remember from what i spoke on the pod when the mirrors are fogged it's hard to know who you are when I'm gone, just know that I ain't going too far I shall live in your hearts, keep going on strong When it's time to meet again, I'll open the door Cherish the moments and you suffering to show them some love Death wins, not today, I'm taking the show on the road I miss you, but I'll be alright Until the day I see you on the other side I'll keep on looking to the sky so the day I see you on the other side, see you on the other side. Wow, man, that's uh, that's really good. That's impactful. It's tough to watch, man. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, that it's guy's tough. talented, man. It's tough to watch. So. Mike does what he does. He does it at uh, the night he died. I lay down in my bed. I can't sleep. Right? I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I lay down at 11.45. And I remember my last conscious thought before I fell asleep was, I'm going to sit, I'm going to call Mike tomorrow, and I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a talk with him. Hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? Like a heart to heart. Yeah, like, what the fuck are you doing? Something's wrong. It was after multiple conversations with you guys. And uh, and I fall asleep shortly after 11.45. At 11.58, my first call, I think, was from you. I called you a couple times and you, I texted you. you. So I woke up at 3 in the morning. My phone was blowing up. All right, I don't sleep with my phone in the room. Otherwise, it keep me up all night. So I, I check my phone. First call I see is from you. Then I see a call from Mackie. Then I see a call from Frank, his brother. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I call Frank first. I think I call Frank back. And I, I'm in my garage. I fall to my knees. And I'm like, tell me you're fucking, tell me this is a joke. Tell me this is, this is a dream. It's not fucking funny. Don't do this to me. And then I went in and told my wife. And I had to tell my kids, too, because both my kids knew Mike. And I had to tell them not what he did. I said, look, daddy's going to be a little off. And then I had to go to work. Yeah. So you got the call from Mackie. I was working. I worked for, I'm still active. So I'm, I work at night. I run a street crimes unit, CSU. But uh, I was in my office and my phone rings. It's Mackie. And I'm like, I answer it. First she texts me. And I couldn't understand the text. It was like something, something, I don't know what. Then she called me, and I asked, I said, what's up? And she's like, Mike's dead. Mike's screaming. 
screaming it. Mike's dead. He's dead, Bobby. He's dead. He's dead. He's in the bed. He's dead. He's cold. I said, calm down. Calm down. You know, cop takes over always, right? No emotion whatsoever. I said, where? what's the address? I know it's on Copeland, right? So I said, I didn't know the exact address. I was never there. Se- 17 Copeland. I thought it was 34. It could be. But anyway, I, it was on the paper. Way to throw a number out there. <laughs> uh, so... I said, go outside. She, I said, what's the address? She goes, I don't know. I don't know. I just know the house. I go, go outside. Look at the number. I said, I need the number. She went outside. She's hysterical. I'm like, dude, this fucking girl. She went in there because he didn't answer the phone calls. And, and or she wasn't, he wasn't on Instagram. He's always on Instagram. He hadn't been on Instagram for like over 12 hours. And she was like, this isn't like him. I know his, his, what he does. Like, like I said. Super structured person, right? You can you. He was easy to follow. He left the breadcrumbs out for you. So she goes outside. She said, "Pretty sure she said 34. Uh, I might be wrong too, but anyway, I called. I have. I called my dispatch. I said, you know, you know, my number 94 950. Go send Leonard's PD to this address. Possible DOA. Girlfriend's on scene. So they went over and she was like, you know. She was there, and, you know, she saw the whole thing, you know, so he, uh, he's, um, I obviously didn't go, like, you know, I, I didn't go there. You know what? I, one of the Lyndhurst officers got on the phone with me and was like, do, do you want to come here? And I'm like, I've seen hundreds of DOAs. I said, the last thing I need to see is my friend dead on the bed with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I don't need to see that. I, I, I can see it enough already. I don't need to see it. If I, That's something that just would have threw me over the top. I could. And that's the difference. I could look at a hundred of them and not think it's one different. thing about it, you know, because I don't have a connection. You know what I mean? When you have that, forget about it. So anyway, that poor girl, you know. She's scarred. Oh, my God. For the rest of her life. And I talked to Mackie quite a bit because if Mike was my brother, by default, she's my sister. She ended up with him because of me. Yeah. So, you know. I don't know how. Mike, so something how did you find out? I don't think I ever asked you this. You texted. You said, text text said he's gone. And, and, like, and that, I tell you what, you know, I, we're all. I was taken back. Sick. I was like, what? I was, what? I'm worried about him. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, I, I know how he is. He's emotional. He, he, you know, he wears it out there. I'm super worried about you. And I'm telling him, and he's like, no, no. You know, and I'm like, yeah. Like, you know, so there comes the part where, you know, where we go through this whole thing, and, you know, I'm tr- I, I, I was really, I wasn't thinking about anything. So I remember saying to you, I did everything I, I was angry. I did everything I could for him. This is, this is on him. I was pissed because I got to be strong for everybody on top of it, and I'm like, you know, I'm not showing everything. And then... As we went through the whole thing, I realized that I didn't do everything I could have did. And that's when it came to a screeching halt. Like, it was a week afterwards. He was buried and gone. And I watched him, the hurts. I said, I'm done. But I wasn't even close to being done. I'm still not done. I just got this tattoo yesterday. That's That's a nice tattoo. And I'm going to tell you guys something about this tattoo. I didn't want a hand tattoo. I hate hand tattoos. I had a dream. Is it okay if I tell this? Absolutely. I had a dream. <laughs> Got to compose myself. No, you don't. So I'm in this diner. I think it's a diner. I'm not 100%. And I look down at my hand. I'm sitting at the counter, and I got a tattoo. And it says Mike Felice on it. It's like a badge, but I'm not 100% what it was on the badge. And then for some reason, I turn to my left, and Mike is walking out. And he looks back at me. And the door goes. I look back, and now I see the tattoo. I know it's a badge. I don't know exactly what it says. I remember the blue line or a black line going through the middle of the seal. And it was in my dream. And I fought with myself and said, I should, I'm going to get this tattoo for him. Do I put it on my hand where I saw it, or do I put it somewhere else because I hate hand tattoos? I don't like them, you know? And some people look good when I'm on there, but I, I don't, that's not my thing. I was going to put it on my leg. I was going to put it on my back. I was going to put it in all these different places. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. It doesn't feel right. I have to put it on my hand because he was in the dream. And it was so real for me 
I know people are going to think that sounds corny, but it felt like it was a sign, like I have to put it there. Like it has to be here to remind me that friendship is, is, is sometimes friendship, it doesn't last forever. And that maybe I didn't do enough. That I definitely didn't do enough to help him. I, I'm using it, at, I'm looking at it like it's a memory, it's for him. It's not about me. It's nothing about this tattoo. This is all about him, so it's on my hand, and I got to look at it for the rest of my fucking life, and I don't even like the goddamn thing on my hand, <laughs> to be honest with you, but but it's for him, you know, and that's I hope that makes sense because it brought me to a different spot, like what what people should really do. Do the opposite of what you normally would do when it, when you have this opportunity, which I hope you never do, that your friend is so fucked up, and you sit there and you watch him just self-deteriorate and you don't do anything because you're so prideful that your brand of recovery and your, like I talk on this shit, all this big talk, that fucking didn't save my friend's life. It, 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 it made it worse. I should have did something. So Mike, what, what was your reaction when you heard? Uh, that just took me back. So I, I have a, and this, this so I, I came, I, I, di I couldn't put it out publicly because at the time when I found out, when I, when I was able to put it out publicly, Mike's father hadn't been notified yet. I was trying to be respectful. I said, Frank, I talked to his brother. I said, Frank, let me know when you notify your, your father. I'm going to put it out on Instagram. Mike had a lot of support, a lot of followers out there. It was probably one of the toughest things I ever did. And I, I'm, I remember right before it went live, I go, I don't even know what the hell I'm going to say. So I just let it out, right? And it was, it was hard. It was one of the hardest things I ever did. Um, going to his viewing, I got there early because I didn't want to see it. I didn't want everybody to see me break because I knew there was one of two things that was going to happen. It's either I was going to jump on top of the casket and punch the, punch the, the, the body bloody, you know, just destroy it because I was so mad or I was going to break. Well, I broke and, um, I wanted to get that out before everybody else got there. Mm. Um, but being this far removed from it, and I, I said this for weeks now, this is something we need to we, we need to feel. We need to feel this stuff because we all feel that we didn't do enough. We we left we left it on the playing field, or we did not leave it on the playing field. No. You know? Mm. So if we feel this, and we this is a sucky feeling to have, it it just blows. The next time an opportunity like this comes up, I don't ever want to feel like this. I don't know about you guys. No. But I, I, I also want to point out that how grateful I am to both of you because I leaned into you two so hard and so heavy. Uh, I think we spoke, for the first two weeks, we spoke every day, multiple times a day. Because I didn't know where else to turn. Nobody else would understand. You know my wife? My wife was mad. Like, she just lost her father. And she's like, but he killed himself. Like, and I said, yes, but he was still my friend. He had a lot of faults. He wasn't a perfect person. But he was still my friend. And I could have done more, and I feel guilty. I feel guilty that yeah. I didn't do anything. So, um... That's, hey, listen. Uh, not today came out of this all. Which a is a meaning. huge positive thing because what not today is all about is saving lives right if you really want to break it down and look at it it's about saving lives it's about doing what you need to do and getting it out there that you need there's always somebody out there well you the know? sun the sun is going to rise tomorrow there's been many and, days and, throughout all of us where we just were like i'm calling it i'm calling it you know what that's one like that was kind of what you just you said but like uh that was just frustrating where he had three guys that been through that, you know, and he didn't, we can give him yeah. probably the best advice in the world. You know? He didn't come to us. Well, he That's, didn't come to us for on, on purpose because yeah. he didn't. Right, want right. It. But I, I get that point. But it, it, and I don't make anything about myself. You know, I'm, I'm just not that type. Like you know, I said it before, and and it, it was just, you know, it brought a lot of. Uh, it's not because of him. It's because of you know how I handle things and things I've seen. It, it just brought a it brought a lot of uh, stuff back into play. It's, yeah, you know. Oh like, my god, I, it's, it's so. Funny. Like I, I I literally my mindset replayed, and like I don't like I said I don't make this about me and, and I'm. But again, there's good things that came out of this. I, I, there's, oh, th there's, this is there's beauty very out, positive. So there's I, beauty I mean, out of ashes. 
you t you take what he did, and I guess most fun episode I ever had. That one. Most fun yeah, episode yeah, I ever yeah. had. You can see the smile, but like you you take what he did, and and it's it's not the best thing in the world. But just think about what he, he's about to shine upon all the people from that. The the there's many things. There's many gifts that Mike Felice and he's gave still me. even even at that time he's still who he is. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like in I know this is morbid or whatever it is, but you know he has the opportunity to to still you know help others. I, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if that's right. I don't and, know if that's the right thing somebody, to say. A, a good friend of mine said to me uh, just last night. They said, you know. A lot of times, people that make other people laugh and people make people feel tears confident of, and tears good about themselves uh, are the people that have the most issues. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are the people that, you know, that need the help, but they're try they're too busy making everybody laugh and everybody right. feel good about themselves, and they're helping so much that they just can't help themselves. Right. And and they and this person used Robin Williams as an example. Like he would be like. Made a great example. Of, made millions of people laugh. But Mike made a great point, and I'm not making it about this is about way bigger than any one There's of so single people, of us. His, his dad, but his family. With, it, it's just with me, this brought me back. It set me back, yeah. like, and I felt that. And listen, I just got done saying. To, I think I said it to you like about a month ago. Yeah, fuck that. I'll never go back to therapy again. I don't need that shit. I just I'm I'm done with that crap. I I'm I am i am right here. I'm right here. Two weeks ago, Mike, you got a therapist for me? I gotta go talk to somebody. I'm not scared to say it. I'll tell yeah, anybody man, that. Listen, I, I I'm going. I need I need to stay here. My therapist I can't get down. Saved my life, man. I'm not I've been with seven years. So I Mike and stay. I got the same therapist. Yeah, listen. Yeah, I, and I, I, I mean, couldn't get in because she didn't have time for me, so I had to get something. You're else. not you're not as important she's, as No, me. she's she's uh, not as fucked up as ours. You're uh, soft. I know. Like she uh she's amazing. Like she's uh you know, she's very into first responders, so forth and so on, but you know, I, I don't know. That's she I guess, she recommended somebody. And the woman that it's she recommended the, is That's excellent. the thing. It's it's out there. You don't you don't have to be cops. You don't have to be afraid to so my, you know, talk to somebody. My, You're asking for help. My pastor put it very clearly. I went to church the Sunday after I found out. And I I, I called him right away because I leaned into my pastor. I, I trust him and I give I give uh his way his words hold a lot of weight to me. And here's what he said to me and it, it kind of gave me a little bit of peace. He said cuz Mike and I met Adam Burt at the same time. We had him in because he was a professional hockey player. You know, we we're going to hear some cool hockey stories. He goes, I met you and Mike here. You're, at, you're on equal footing. And he goes, I watched you. And I don't want to make this about faith because people think I'm a Jesus freak. Um, he goes, I watched you find your faith and find the community in the church, and I watched you go like this. We tried to draw Mike in. Just We, we did. We tried to just say, hey, just come to one. Just see how, see how it fits you. And Mike wouldn't. And Mike wouldn't. And this is what was going on. And this is, this is how he's doing it. And he goes, the further you found your faith, the further away you got from Mike because he was down. He was backsliding. He was going down. And, um, but I st it's not going to relieve the guilt. It's not. But uh, there's a lot of gifts. He gave us the Not Today movement. He gave us, he gave me you 2 Like, that's the, that's the most important gift that he gave me. He brought me to you 2 who, I, you know, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if I could have gotten through this without you 2 and I appreciate it. I just well, want to say thank you. you. Yeah, we appreciate you. I appreciate Well, he promised me a high colonic, <laughs> and then he dipped out on it. So that's what I love about Bobby Crude. No, really, he said to me, "I'll pay, I'll pay," because I said to him, "I said, you ever get a high colonic?" And he said, uh, "No." And I, I said, "It's power wash. You know, <laughs> you get up in there." I said, "Colonoscopy doesn't beat it. This is a high colonic. You're awake for it, so it feels good." So he goes. I said, I really want one. And he said to me, You're a sick motherfucker. I'll pay for it if you let me watch. And I said, I'm down because I'm I, like, he knew right away. He goes, uh, he goes, I, I said, why would you even ask? You, you bring me. It's like you're my date. You can sit there and do whatever you want. I'm voyeurism. I'm down. And you can watch it go through the tube. And apparently. he's like, he's like, I'll definitely pay for that. See, I that's, said, they're expensive. This is what he would have loved. You know what I mean? That, like, that's, yeah, that's why I'm when, doing it. Because I'm his, looking over there and he's there. I remember his face that when we were on the show, he was He's just, there. He was in his right glory. And right now he's cracking up because of the fucking glory. high colonic. I'm like, yeah. Oh, really? Seriously? <laughs> I uh, I miss him every single day. 
But unfortunately, this episode is coming to an end. Of course, because we don't have enough money to get any more studio time, right? <laughs> Cheap bastards. <laughs> Mike's death has taught us. It, it's hard to quantify how much he, it's taught us. Um, I think it's made us better people. I think it's. I think it's brought us closer together. But if you, Mike, we'll start with you, Mike. If you could pick one thing that Mike's death has taught you, this suffering that you've gone through, what do you think it is? You, it, it's okay. Put your pride down. It, it's okay to talk. It's 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 okay to uh, open up, especially to people that like us that really care about them. Bobby, what do you think? I think if I learned anything about this or he taught me, he taught me to be uh, less stubborn. Uh, he taught me to think outside of the box and not be so, uh, Mike said pride, I'm going to say prideful in the sense that my way is the right way. You know, and he knew that about me. He knew that I was, I held, I had conviction in what I said about things that are adverse. Listen, addiction and alcoholism are adverse things. They affect people adversely. They affect people around you adversely. And he knew that when I got sober, I had my thing, and this is the way I do it, and this is the way I help people that want help. If you don't want help, there's the highway, buddy, right? And he knew that, and he used that not to use me. You know what I mean? And he taught me that I can't be like that, that I have to, if I see something and I care enough, I have to do something about it. I've said many times that my circle of friends is so small, all right? And I can't lose another one. I have to be willing. This is what all of this has taught me. I have to be willing to lose one of my inner circle of friends in order to save their life. Because having you guys as my friend is important to me. But like you said, it's not about me, all right? That's a selfish thing to want you guys in my life. It's very, very selfish, but I gotta stop making this about me. If you, if you start going downhill, I gotta say, Mike, you're fucking wrong what you're doing, and not be afraid of what the consequences are. Whether you never talk to me again, as long as you're alive, as long as you're alive, I gotta, I gotta drop that fear. So this is what that's taught me. That won't happen anymore. I appreciate you guys, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna end this on one note, because the last thing he said to me was, I love you, brother, and I love you guys both. So thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, Kevin. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Suffering Podcast, The Suffering of Mike Felace. And let's think about all the stuff that we learned. Mike was the one who brought everyone together. Mike was definitely born to be a cop. Mike closed down his emotions, especially later in his life. We all got to notice the signs. There is nothing that will give you relief from the guilt. But most importantly... Mike gave me many gifts, but the best one was Bobby and Mike. And that's going to do it for this episode. Don't forget to go to popple.com, put in the code TSP20 for a 20% discount. Follow us on all social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, X, Clapper, OnlyFans. And that's going to do it for this episode. We will see you on the next one.